When building APIs using FastAPI, you can declare the type of variables passed to your endpoints using Python standard type annotations. The best parts of FastAPI are all based on these type annotations. So here I've got a very simple API with one endpoint slash products defined. And what it's going to do is it's going to return me all of this product data. I won't get into the details of passing data to FastAPI right here. But if I define an argument for this endpoint in the handler function, then FastAPI will expect to find that in the request path as a query string like this. So at the end of the path, question mark, followed by query string parameter name equals value. And then, like I said, I can type that using Python standard type annotation, colon, space, data type. That one's going to be a string. By using the typing, you get the usual benefits such as correct type hints when you're using those variables in your code. So here, if I want to look at the category, look at the attributes, you can see here, now Python is going to show me all the methods which are methods of a string. If I didn't have that type there, then it wouldn't give me those suggestions because it doesn't know what type is and hence it doesn't know what methods and attributes that type has. But aside from that basic type hinting, FastAPI gives you a bunch of useful things that are specific to APIs when you type the variables in your code. One of those things is that FastAPI automatically performs data conversion. That means it casts data to the right type if it can. And this is particularly useful here because query string parameters are all strings when they're received. So if, for example, I had another variable that was allowed to come into this endpoint, which is the min price of the product which I want to get, which of course is going to be a float. And then I pass that in as another query string parameter. I can give multiple query string parameters by separating the key value pairs with an AND sign. Then that, by default, if I wasn't using FastAPI, it would be received as a string. But because FastAPI has got that useful data conversion, it's going to cast that to a float. So down here, if I print the type of my min price and then run this, and I've made a silly mistake here, I've made a mistake somehow of not putting the actual full path to the API in. So I need to specify the protocol, HTTP, the computer which is running on, which is my local host. IP address, that just means my computer, and then the port, the particular network interface which my computer is listening on. If I run that now, then you can see that this query string parameter has been passed into the function and printed here, and it's of type float. So FastAPI has cast it into a float, even though it's received as a string, as all query string parameters usually are by default. FastAPI also uses type declarations to perform data validation. So those types mean that you'll receive an error message if you try to make a request which has invalid data types that can't easily be cast into the right type. So if I were to pass a string in where I've specified that it should be a float, you can't easily cast a string to a float. So the API logs this error, 422 unprocessable entry, and fast API provides you a helpful error message. Not just some something went wrong, but it actually tells you it figures out because of the typing that this is the wrong type. The final thing I'll mention that FastAPI does with this typing, which is a really useful feature, is that it uses the type declarations to automatically create documentation for your API. So you don't have to write it. You can look at the documentation generated by going to the slash docs path of your API in the browser. So I know it's running on this URL. And if I go to that URL slash docs, you'll see that it's generated this API documentation for me. If I expand the one API method which I've defined so far, which is for get requests to slash products, then it's gonna show me here, it takes in the category, which is a string, and the min price, which is a number. Super useful, I don't have to write any of this myself, just generated from those type annotations. Under the hood, it does this by looking at your code and turning it into an open standard format known as OpenAPI, which can be specified in YAML or JSON. And at a glance, it looks something like this. 
So that's the JSON which actually defines this whole API. Included in there is all of the different paths, all of the different parameters and their types for every part of my API. Because FastAPI generates a standard format, many documentation generation libraries can interface with it because they all understand that open API format. So I guess just to prove the point, um, FastAPI provides an alternative documentation generated by a library called Redoc. And you can find that if you just go to not slash docs, but slash Redoc. And then you get this alternative documentation, which looks different. It also looks great. It's really just whichever one you want to use. And it will be really easy for you to extend this to work with any other documentation generation library as well on your own, because it's all based on that open API JSON. There's a lot more detail in the fast API documentation that you should go and check out, but that's a good start for now for understanding how the typing and documentation works in fast API and some of the features which make it really useful.